and we're rocking. So um, tell me a little bit about, well, first of all, what are we talking about today? What do you want to talk about today? Um, basically, I want to start this thing up and right now I'm working uh, a five day a week job uh, from about 6 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. every day, maybe a little bit longer. Okay. And I uh, got a steady income, family, three kids and a wife. And uh, so the steady income is something that I'm a little worried about giving up. Got it. So my thoughts are, you know, pretty much how do I start something up like this up while working that job? And, you know, I'm the, I, I carry the insurance, you know, you got 401k and stuff like that. So to give that stuff up, I want to make sure I can supplement the income pretty much. Yeah. Great. Well, so quick thing on the 401k, I wouldn't worry so much about that one because a 401k is just money that's being put away that you can't access for a long time anyway. Right. Like later money, you right. know, and the whole reason of starting a business is that you have more upside and really the opportunity of running a business is you, you create your own 401k without having to put it in a 401k. Um, so I wouldn't be too worried about the 401k part, but that's totally beside the, the point here. So remind me, Jim, do you have the course? I do. Okay. Just so I know if I can reference that or not. Yep. And so where, when did you decide to start a painting business? Why are you interested in starting a painting, painting business? What are your goals with this thing? I have been, well, I'm 38 right now and I paint, started painting when I was about 19. Okay. Uh, I worked for a company for about six, seven years. Okay. Um, it was mostly interior repaints, some exterior, a lot of like just quick flip apartment painting. Um, so then I left that and went to and started my own company and okay. did that for about two, three years. Doing um, painting or flips? Uh, painting. Okay. Painting, yeah. But pretty much did everything the complete opposite of what you say in your course. Yep. Uh, I was doing all the painting. I was, you know, I'd do a job then I'd be like, Oh, okay. That job's done. Now what? And I have to go find another job. So there might've been a few days, maybe a week downtime. Yep. It's a new construction, but it was mostly, um, interior repaints. Okay. So then that became to the point where it was like, all right, it's time to grow up and get a steady job. So that's kind of where I, the job I'm at now. <laughs> Got it. Bummer. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I'm trying, I, basically I'm going to be learning from a lot of mistakes that I made the first go around. Yep. And, um, you know, from a lot of the things that I've watched in your videos, whether via YouTube or the course, uh, or things like this that I've watched online. I watched a couple today, as a matter of fact, for the different people that you were doing calls with. So nice. All right, good. So some of what I say might be repetitive, but let's start at the bottom with, um, Cover this a couple of different angles, right? So the first thing is I, I would recommend figuring out, because you're in Michigan, right? Is that right? Correct. Correct. Okay. So in Michigan, you want to figure out you're, you're going to have some seasonality. And so, and everyone is, no matter what market you're in, you're going to have some kind of seasonality unless you're fortunate enough to be in like Texas or Southern California or something like that, where you can paint year round. Even then you're going to be slow in December. So we want to account for seasonality. So, we always want to set like an annual target. So you want to know like how much money do you need to make in income through the, you know, we want to be thinking about that number by the, for the, the end of the season. So in Michigan, like we want to plan on not doing any interior work, basically just don't plan on doing any interior work at the beginning, you know, okay. you're, now you're going to still use lead services and do interior work, but you have way more control over exterior work. So we need to think about two things for you. We need to think about number one, replacing your week to week income. That's the first thing. And the second thing is you're replacing annual income. See if you, for example, and we need to consider both of these because if you can replace your week to week income, and so you're like, cool, I know if I quit my job, I can immediately be making more in my business if only I was full-time in my business, 
right? If you just know that, like know it, right? Which basically means like if you're making 80% of your work income, your job income, you're making 80% of that number on your painting business on the side of your job. Right. You're like, yeah, dude, if just give me one day to knock doors, one day to do estimates and I'll make all in all exceed my job income. Right. Right. Like when you have that kind of confidence, that's when you quit your job. However, let's say that that time is the first week of September. Maybe not so smart to quit your job. Right. Right. Because you're like, season, yeah, yeah you, you're like, cool. Like for the last three weeks of September, I made 1500 a week instead of a thousand a week. And then October hit and I made no money. And then November hit and I lost money. And then I went in debt in December and then I had to pick up a new job and I'm in debt. Right. And I got to start over. Right. Because you're not okay. starting here until end of March, maybe. Oh, no, you, you'll sell in, you can sell in January. We sold plenty of work. Oh, well, yeah. Sell. Yeah, you sell. But as far as the actual work itself. For yeah. Exterior, yeah. It, well, yeah. March, March, may, maybe is maybe. a big maybe. Um, yeah. Really, it's probably April and, and for sure in May. Right. But. That's okay because we can make money in cash flow and deposits anyways. Um, that's the point. So if marketing costs me 10% and I'm taking a 25% deposit, I'm making 15% of what I sell per week. So if I'm selling 10 grand a week, I'm making 1500 bucks a week if I'm not doing any interior jobs. That's just like in, dump, in deposits from... Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, so we want to kind of consider that a little bit. So you want to think of both of these numbers. So... Let's look at the, the week to week and then the annual, like what, well, let's just start with week to week. So what's like the income you would, you would be like, Hey, if I could make this in my business, I'd feel comfortable leaving my job. It'd be nice to do like 1500 a week. Okay. So 1500 bucks a week. Of course. Well, I, I'm trying to think about insurance costs and things. Let's just, we'll just do it for 1500 for easy math. Yeah. You mean insurance costs like health insurance and shit? Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So it might be, in the situation yeah. I'm in, I carry it. So if I was gonna, if I was gonna quit my job, my wife would have to carry it. Hers goes, hers is higher. So yeah. If it was just me, I'd be like, all right, screw it. I'm just gonna wing it for six months without health insurance. <laughs> right. Yeah, but you got family and shit. That's right. You don't want to risk your family. Got it. And uh, it's probably a smart thing to do. Okay. Can you read this or is it back? Yeah. yeah, no, I can read it. All right. So 1500 a week means, you know, how many weeks we have left this year. We've got basically June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. I want to be conservative in all of my estimations. I want to say that I want to make enough money by the end of September to last me through the end of February. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. That's how much money I want to put in my pocket for my painting business to feel comfortable. Now, I'm going to use lead services because you're in Southeast Michigan, like Detroit, yeah. Ann Arbor, that great area. Uh, well, more like uh, Macomb, Oakland Township. Uh, yeah. So you got some north, north, like Rochester Hills, Detroit. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that's exactly where we're at. So, um, great area. You know, it's that's a, I, I wish we were close. Our business is a little closer up north because I think there's like great territories up there. Um, so you're going to utilize lead services in October, November. December. Look, basically, we're we're saying we want to make enough money that's going to be the income I need from now through the end of February. And we're going to, then we're going to make the plan to do that now through the end of September, which means we're planning on you sitting on your ass, October, November, December, January, and February. But you're not going to sit on your ass those five months. You're going to go and hang Christmas lights, or you're going to go and hunt down some commercial jobs, or you're going to go do some interiors and maybe paint a couple yourself just because like, eh, it's one $2,000 job. I'll paint it in a week and make two grand. So you're not going to actually sit on your hands. We're just going to be super conservative with your plans. You follow I'm me? I'm surprised to hear you say go paint. If, look, if it's, That's just if, in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look, if it's like if you have one job 
and work is not coming in in the slow season, yeah, it's better to just go like paint a house and make 20 bucks an hour than not make it at all. Or you could just say, I'm going to sit at home and just pay out the 20 an hour. You could do that. I'd rather do it myself and get paid. Yeah, exactly. Like if you've got not, and you've got the experience of painting, if you didn't have that experience, I would say don't do it because sometimes you make things worse as you probably know. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so we're going to look at how many weeks do we have? So we said we've got June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February. So we've got nine months, call it 30, 38 weeks. Now we want to make like 50 grand, you know, like 50,000 bucks to hold you over that during through that time, you know? And then you've got how many weeks between now and into September? And this is very conservative a number, you know? Okay. So you've got a little bit of math to kind of do on your own. Mm -hmm. knowing when do I leave my job? Right? Like I can't give you like it's this time because so, – so let's just kind of move to another little topic real quick. So we want to consider – how much money do I want to be able to make on my painting business on the side of my job to be like, okay, this is what I can do if I didn't have a job? Well, I mean, it'd be great to just have the same income, but really, I mean, I'm trying to, so if you were, if I was making say 30, right. With working a full-time job, what, what could I do when, my whole focus is on this. Right. You know I mean? Right. Because that's kind of the issue. I'm, I'm there, the concern I have is, okay, I start doing lead services or I start getting all these jobs, right? And then I don't have time to do them because I'm only, I can only do them on a weekend. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm doing now. Like I'll do jobs myself on the weekend. Yeah. And then my other thought is, okay, well, if I do start getting subs, which I've got a handful of like applicants through just indeed.com. Yeah. Um, being that I start work at 6 a.m., how do I how do I go and approach that? Because they're not obviously starting at 6 a.m. They're, if they're doing an exterior, they're starting at 9.30, you know, when the dew is off or whatever. Yeah. So how do I approach that situation? Well, so here's, <laughs> Maybe I'm getting out of myself. <laughs> here's what I would think, man, if I'm you, because – you know, some people have enough flexibility in their job that they could get a good sub, do a job on a weekend, another job on a weekend, and then trust that sub enough to start them during the week. I can go drop by the job set at the end of the day. Like, look, even when I'm running my painting business full time, it doesn't mean I'm just like at the beck and call of a client. Like sometimes I get a problem client. I'm like, I can meet you tomorrow. Yeah. I can come by tonight. I can, you know what I mean? So it's okay to produce while you're running, you're, you're doing your job. You know, you just want to test that sub out on a couple jobs when you are available for peace, right. freedom, peace of mind. Right. So what I would probably do, man, is I would definitely not be doing any painting, though. You're never going to be able to leave your job if you're doing the painting. Okay. Because you need to be focused on marketing sales. So what I would say is you've got about 18 weeks now through the end of September. Give or take, maybe 20. Well, let's call it 18. So you need to make about three grand a week to make your, you know, $54,000 by the end of September. Now let's just think of like a lower number where you're like, okay, I think I could do that. Cause the reality is, is you can get some lead service jobs. You can go, go and bid jobs and you could get, you could probably make another 10 grand in October, November, December, pretty much no problem. And same with January and February, you know, like if you, if you put in the hustle, like it's not hard to make a thousand bucks a week or 1500 bucks a week during those, those times. Um, it's just not hard, you know? So you, just so we, we know we've got a really conservative number 50 K that's like what we're really going to aim for. But the reality is, is I could probably, let's say you keep your job for four weeks. Well, that's another, that's six grand less you need. Right. Makes sense. So now we're at 44 and then let's say you're like, okay, well in those four months, let's say I can make 10 grand, like 700 bucks a week. Okay. So now we're down to like, you know, 34 grand I need. You following me? I hear what you're saying, yeah. Okay. So let's say it's 34,000. 
That's my number. That's my minimum that I'm aiming for. And I'm going to try to be pacing for that while keeping my job. I'm going to plan on keeping my job no matter what for the next four weeks. So what I do is I'm going to schedule, I'm going to go out and I'm going to try to book work and schedule it four weeks out. I'm just not going to pay. I'm going to do no production for four weeks because I'm going to go all in on marketing and sales to be like, if I can hit my marketing and sales targets, no production, just marketing and sales targets while I have my full-time job for these four weeks. And then everything I book, I schedule out. Then when I leave my job in four weeks, what replaces my job is production and I can maintain the marketing and sales. Right. Right. Well, if I've got 18 weeks, I need to make 34,000 bucks. That's right. About $2,000 a week, mm -hmm. 2000 a week. So to make 2000 a week, I would need to sell about 6,000 a week. Okay. So that's 6,000 sold per week. Now I base that number just on doing this for a long time. That 30% to 35% margins is what you could, you should be getting in this first phase. Okay. How you can get 6,000 a week in sales is booking two jobs a week. Do that six or seven estimates a week. Okay. Schedule your jobs out four to six weeks. And this would be my focus, pure and simple. The longer you, see what's interesting is all the income you are making in your painting business while keeping your job, you're socking it away. Right. So if you end up doing this, let's say you fall a little short of this and you're only making a thousand a week on the side of your job, so you do that for eight weeks. What you've done is now you don't need 50K, you need 42. And you've got 8,000 already stockpiled from those eight weeks on painting. So now I only need like 34 and I still have time. So then maybe I keep my job another six weeks so I need even less and I make another 6K. And then I'm like, dude, I've got 15K in the bank right now. There's 10 weeks left of summer. I've gotten some of this stuff dialed in. So you're just kind of going through like this model in your head week to week. But your focus right now is push production back, you know, schedule your jobs in like, so if you go book two jobs this week, schedule one for four weeks out, one for five weeks out. And then if next week you book two more, schedule them for five, five weeks out and, and six weeks out or something, right? So you're actually scheduling them back. So you're like creating a runway and a ramp up. Yeah, because we're coming into the busy season. <laughs> yeah, and it gives you, you don't want to, what you don't want to have happen is you're like, you schedule all these jobs assuming you're going to leave your job and then you don't leave your job and all of a sudden you have six jobs to start while you're running your job still. Right. You, know, you want a little ramp up where you're like, okay, these two weeks I'm going to do one job and one job to bring on a sub, test him once, test him twice, and then the next week he's doing his own thing and I test a new one for two weeks and I've got two subs doing their own thing. So you could ramp this up very slowly while keeping your job. So what I tell people is I'm like, look, you can let me jump over here. So I, I tell people like you can start this business two ways. You can start it risky or you can start it not risky. You're going to take one kind of risk either way. I guess you could say you could take three kinds of risk. One risk is doing nothing. I know exactly how doing nothing is going to turn out. It's not good. <laughs> it's not pretty, right? It's basically doing what you're doing for another 30 years. And then if you're like most of America, retiring and having no money still, right? Because it's, it's just, that's unfortunately how it goes. Yeah. And that's if you're fortunate enough to have your health when you retire and you did pretty well and you've got a little bit of money, then you've got just enough to like barely survive for the next 20 years. Mm-hmm. It's just not what I'm into, you know, especially when there's this other option. So my other option is I can do something. I can start a business. Now I can take two kinds of risk doing it that way. See, I think the biggest risk is doing nothing, you know, because even if it takes me a couple years to crack this nut, okay, well then I got 20 years to build a business to set myself, you know, enjoy those 20 years, 28 years. I think you're on the same page about that, right? Yeah, fine. So, 
The other risk I can take is quit my job completely and go all in on my painting business. Now that to me is really fucking risky as well. I don't think it's as risky as doing nothing because I know how doing nothing is going to turn out. If I quit everything and just go all in on my business, there's a fire under your ass. What's that? I might let a fire under your ass like, oh shit, now what? It, It will. So there's a chance of success. And if I fail, I'll just go get a job anyway. It just might create a little hardship for me. Yeah. So the third option is I work harder. That's the one I like. I'm, I'm like, look, I'm going to work extra hard for however long it takes. You know, and the goal that I'm showing you is do it in fucking four weeks. Do it in six weeks. You know, figure out how do I sell 6000 a week next week. And if I don't hit it that week, what can I do the next week? And I would throw everything I've got at it, man. I would go do- knock doors two nights a week. You get off at 2.30 in the afternoon, mm-hmm. go knock doors four days a week. Stack your weekend with estimates and just be like, honey, kids, daddy's going to hustle, got to hustle for a week. Yeah. For four weeks. And, you know, you give it everything you got to hit that 6K in four weeks. Now, if it doesn't happen – then it might take you four weeks longer. And then you might say, okay, I'm not going to keep up this intense pace. I'm going to slow my pace, make sure I have Sunday with my family and three nights a week with my family. But Monday night and Tuesday night, I'm knocking doors and Saturday I'm doing estimates. Okay. I'm going to keep hustling this out. And maybe, you know, maybe it's the worst case scenario is you do that all freaking summer and you stockpile 20 grand. Not a bad thing. Right. And then you keep doing it through the winter and you, stockpile another 20 you know and by by january you're like dude i've got 25k i've got these lead services that are churning out leads like i'm confident right now i can make 1500 a week and i've got 30 grand in the bank from the hustle i did the last seven months that's 20 weeks that i have set aside for 1500 a week that i can pull from for the next 20 weeks and then i'm already confident i can do 1500 a week starting next february so, you know, that's kind of the way I look at it is that's your worst case scenario is I'm working harder than anybody else is for the next seven months. And that might just be the price that it costs me to not do the job thing for the next 30 years. Right. And that's the price I'm willing to pay. Right. And, so, you know, people got to be real with themselves about am I willing to do what it takes? Because that's really it. Like, People who make it in business are just the people who are willing to do what it takes. And you don't know what it's going to take. Right. The only way you find out what it's going to take is, am I there yet? No. Okay. Well then it takes more. Right. So that's kind of how I, how I'd look at it. And that's how I break your numbers down. So does that, is that pretty? No, that, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. Let me ask you something else uh, that you have been doing some business here in Michigan. Yeah. What's the licensing stuff all about? Uh, uh, I, see, I, I see that it says you're supposed to have one. So here's the thing about licensing and about anything. Like I'm not a legal guy. I'm not a, you talk to your attorneys and you got to manage your own thing. Everything has consequences. You know, if you don't operate with insurance, you run the risk of the, that comes with not operating with insurance. If you don't operate with a license, you run the risk of not operating with a license. So you can operate without a license. You know, just like you can speak. I just know some states have, have different, every state has different requirements. So Michigan is a required licensed state. Yeah. Okay. I just want to, yeah, I don't want to do it without it. I just wanted to make yeah. sure I was understanding that, yeah. that correctly. Well, and just for anybody else who's watching too, is like, you could, you know, you could go, there's a ton of people who operate without a license. If I'm going to try to, if I can't afford a license, but I'm like, I've got to get started. I can either go and make the money some other way and then buy my license, or I can go and operate without a license and run the risks that come with operating without a license until I can afford a license, you know, or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in Michigan and in, in, in a handful of places, license required, the requirements vary, the costs vary. I think it was about a thousand bucks, you know, in Michigan for those, those fees. Um, I mean, I can look into that. I just didn't know what the, I mean, when you go in and you, and you sell a job to somebody, it's nice to be able to say, you know, licensed and insured, obviously. Some people just say, oh, I'm insured, and then yeah. they kind of snake their way out of that question. <laughs> yeah, and look, if like, 
I'm not giving the advice to do that, do that. But if I were going to do that, I would just be honest with someone and say, I don't have my license. I'm just getting started. Um, and honestly, like I, part of it is it's, it's a thousand bucks. I'm trying to get a business going for myself and my family and I don't, I can't afford it yet. I'm going to use this deposit and this job to help me get that license. And you know, I'm going to make it happen. I know that's like kind of to some degree, that's a risk you're taking. So I'll knock some money off if you're willing to go with me and, and help me out with that. Okay. And you know, cause ultimately someone would buy on trust, you know, they're buying you. It's the same thing I do when I'm, I'm selling a brand new job as a brand new company. So I'm like, look, I know you're taking a chance on me. I'll knock a little money off for taking a chance on me. And people see it as an opportunity because if they already want to work with you and you're going to discount it just because you're new, but they still trust you, they're like, sweet, I'm getting a fucking deal. I'm getting like the guy I want out of discount because he's new. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know where we are at a time, but. Um, uh, we're okay. What other questions you got, man? I've got a, I'm, I'm okay for a few minutes longer. Okay. Um, well, I know you guys do most of the exterior out there. Have you, have you gone into any of the interior stuff? If so, are you using employees or subs for that? Cause it's a little bit more, uh, you know, finesse and, yeah. uh, you know, then you're, you're having, it's different than having somebody on the outside of somebody's home to have somebody on the inside of someone's home. Yeah. So what approach do you take for that? No different. No different. You know, pickier with who I allow in a house, in, a, in an interior. But still sub. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, subbing, I, I've said this a lot of times, but subbing has such a bad name. Like, dude, they're just people. You know? I know sometimes the, the client themselves feel a little bit different about it, though. If it's, uh, yeah, if they're a shady person. But look, I have subcontractors. That's just, let's not call them subcontractors. I have guys that are amazing people. You know, I don't care if I'm paying them as a 1099 or a W-2. I'll put that person in any of my client's house. Regardless right, you have to feel how, comfortable with them anyways, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, and, and on the other side, I'm not going to put someone in someone's house. Look, if they're shady, if it's a shady individual, I'm not putting them in one of my client's houses, whether they're an employee or a sub. Yeah. And if they're an amazing human being, I'm going to put them in my client's house, whether they're an employee or sub. Okay. Like the, the, the sub versus employee thing is a designation. And it's, it's a defined working relationship. That's all it really is. But I'm going to be just as particular with who, you know, I trust with my clients, regardless of their designation. All right. Um, and I would t typically, I would try guys out on an exterior job before I want them to do an interior. Or I'd look for guys, or I'd be a little pickier with like calling some references. I don't, I try to be uh, checking on, in on the job more just to, you know, like I'm going to be really on top of that shit. Yeah. When you have uh, your subs, as far as insurance and stuff, like I just heard you talk about a story with the garage and how you guys covered it and whatnot. Yeah. Um, well, obviously you guys are insured. Your subs are insured too, right? So, I mean, yeah. when, when things occur, who usually takes the, the hit on that? Is it usually you guys or... It's, you're, it's, you're a little bit, obviously you're larger and been around longer than somebody starting out. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's case by case. And those situations that are expensive are fewer and far between. And if you're going to go out and do a hundred thousand in business this year and pay 65, 60,000 to a sub and you have $5,000 worth of problems, you're still making 25%. Yeah. And that would be enormous problems. And that'd be overpaying. I'm sorry. That'd be 35 K in profit. And that's so it's kind of baked in a little bit. Like we're going to expect some of that to happen and we're going to always put clients first. We're rarely going to make a claim on insurance. We're rarely going to ask a sub to make a claim on insurance. It's usually small stuff. That's like a broken window screen for 25 bucks. Right. It's or, not worth the claim. <laughs> no, or like even a roof, you know, there was like 270 bucks to replace a few roof tiles that got some overspray on them. So it's very rare that there's like the garage door story you heard about 1200 mm -hmm. bucks. That's rare. And that's why in my course, I'm like, look, keep this simple. If you walk into a house and you're like intimidated by it, walk away. Walk away. Yeah. Don't risk yourself. If you don't have a sub that you know can tackle something like that, don't try to do it. Don't force okay. it. And then just to touch on the course a little bit, I've heard a couple of different videos of you saying you're going to do different uh, 
I don't know if you want to call them updates or just different videos to add on. Yeah. So being that you bought it already, is that something that you can get added on or? Yeah, I need to figure that out a little bit because there's some people who like got this course years ago and they've been getting all these updates for free. But like, I, I got to figure that out a little bit. Like, I'm going <laughs> to handle that. I'm going to raise the prices by a few hundred bucks. Okay. So it's not anything huge. I'm going to offer a couple different programs that aren't going to like go into that main course, you know, that'll be like separate, you know, so I'm not sure exactly how I handle it, but most likely it'll be a, like, Hey, you know, that's just included if you already got the course. Okay. Cause I mean, the YouTube videos are helpful and listening to other people do videos like this are helpful as well. Yeah. That's nice to have. So, all right, well, I got some work to do, I guess. Yeah, man. And so keep me posted in the group. Are you in the Facebook group? I am. Okay, good. So yeah, just man, focus hard on hard on marketing and sales for four weeks. If you can get to six, if you can sell 20 grand in the next four weeks, you're looking yeah. good. And I would, I mean, do you do a lot of daytime estimates or, or, I mean, I would imagine most of the stuff's in the evening and weekends anyways, right? Yeah. It's easier for sure. It's better to do estimates evenings and weekends. Yeah. Okay. I mean, about, we do a lot of daytime just because that's when our sales reps want to do them and we get them filled, but it's easier evenings, weekends. What, what uh, these services are working for you guys out here in Michigan besides the painter's choice? What, I mean, I All see a lot of Angie list on the back of the truck, no. but I hear bad stuff about it. Don't use Angie's list. Don't use anything where you're not paying early on. Don't use anything where you're not paying directly for the lead. Like Angie's list, you're not paying for leads. You're paying for a membership you could pay for the membership and get no leads direct mail. You're not paying for leads. You're paying for mail being sent, dropping flyers. dropping flyers. You're not paying for leads. You're paying for someone to walk around and put flyers on doors yeah. with door to door marketing. I'm paying for leads with lead services. I'm paying for leads. I want to make sure I'm paying for direct results early on. And so the ones that, you know, we've used or use is uh, painter choice, craft Jack networks. You could try thumbtack. But honestly, man, where you're going to get the, like, the most aggressive approach for you would be like, go hustle, go knock doors. Yeah. I mean, that's like, I would use, I would use probably Painter Choice and Craft Jack, but I would mostly go knock doors. Okay. Because the trouble, the tough thing for you, man, and anyone who's in the, with a job will be converting your leads that come in during the day. Oh, like, from, from the services? Yeah. If you get a yeah, lead at 10 o'clock and you can't. Right away, yeah. Yeah, if you call, get a lead at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11 a.m., you get three leads, and you don't call them till 4 o'clock, you might only set up one of those for a bid, which is fine. You know, it's a $100 estimate. Fine, I'll take it, because I should be selling $1,000 an estimate. So that's still 10% marketing cost, so it's fine. It's just that is a disadvantage a little bit. And door-to-door -door is like around your schedule. And door-to-door -door is more efficient, too, because I can go get five estimates in one neighborhood Whereas if you're using a lead service, you might be up in Troy and then down over here and then back up over here and then down in, you know what I mean? Like right. you might be all over the place. Yeah. So I would go and hustle out door to door, man. And the, the nice thing about door to door is your margins are higher too. You don't, you don't pay for that if you get the lead. Right. So there's a lot of benefits to starting with door to door and it will give you confidence when you're like, Dude, I know that if I go knock doors for 10 hours, I'm getting 10 leads. I'm setting seven estimates. And I know if I set seven estimates, I'm booking 7K. So I'm like, dude, I got the, totally got the ball in my court to leave my job because I'll go knock 20 hours if I have to until I find someone and overpay them. And that's one of the, that's one of the courses I'm going to put together is door-to-door -door one. It's going to be separate because it's just, it's gold, man. I mean, we're going to be setting like 60 to 80 estimates a week from our door-to-door -door team. And yeah, then I, I bet you the majority of people don't even do it. Most people don't do it, yeah. Because it's, it's nerve-wracking. <laughs> yeah. Until you do it, you get you're it like, down. oh, this actually isn't hard. This is actually unbelievable. You know, I mean, you've probably seen that in the, in the membership group. You've probably seen a lot of people talk about, like, just yeah. go do it. I was nervous to do it, and then I did it, and I've gotten so much work from doing it. And, you know, and look, it's not the end-all, be-all, but it's a pretty powerful way to pour gas on the fire. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sounds good, man. Awesome, man. Well, sorry about the, the miscommunications a little bit, but I'm excited for you, man. And, and it'll just be patient and persistent and like, it'll be worth it, man. It'll be worth it. Okay. Appreciate the time, man. Yeah. Talk to you soon. We'll see you in the group. Right. Bye, Jim. Thanks.